Now, joining me now is News Corp columnist Louise Roberts and Royal commentator Angela Mollard. Now, Angela, with the benefit of hindsight, a slimmed-down royal family doesn't seem like such a good idea. It doesn't, does it? I mean, if you think about it, in the last four years, they have lost the equivalent of half a soccer team. I mean, six members of the royal family, uh, Meghan and Harry, have gone um, to America. Then, of course, we had Prince Andrew had to step back from royal duties. We then saw the death of uh, the Queen. And now, of course, uh, Charles and Kate are both out of operation. Look, I do think, yes, it, it is a slim down monarchy and they will be overstretched. William particularly will be overstretched. But I don't see it really as a crisis. I think it's something that needs to be managed. Their charities, um, their public duties will, will obviously need to uh, be managed. But they're not performing monkeys. They are human. And I don't think they've ever looked more human and less institutional than they do right now. And I think the the other key point is that we might just have to lower our expectations of them. We now live in a 24-7 mm. news cycle. It might now actually be time for us to step back as members of the public and say, no, we don't need to see them every day. The Queen, when she was pregnant, um, the late Queen, with um, with uh, the last two of her children, Andrew and Edward, she took months off work. So it's not unprecedented for members of the royal family to take some time off. Absolutely. And look, I caught up with Peter Phillips earlier this week. This is what he had to say about the current internal support network within the royal family. There's a lot of pressure on the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh at the moment, my mother, um, to be able to take on a lot more of, and, and the Queen, obviously, to take on a lot more of the responsibilities and lots more of the engagement um, perspective. And we'll bring you that interview shortly. But, Louise, off the back of what Angela said, doesn't this also mean extra responsibility for William and potentially for longer? It does, Caro, because as the heir to the throne, the burden falls directly on his shoulders. I mean, Camilla is, has also been stepping up, of course, but she's 76 years of age. She also has a spouse who is battling cancer, so there has to be mitigation for her as well. And I think to Russell's point about the rest of the family pulling together and perhaps looking at the calendar of events, what is the most critical for the royals to be seen at and what involves the most travel, what's the most arduous task, and making sure that these are shared equally amongst people who perhaps aren't at home looking after someone who's battling cancer. I really think it's time for everyone to pull together. And we know that's what the royal family does very, very well. It's a shame in a way, of course, that Harry's not there. I mean, I, I would argue that now is a good time for him to sort of fly in under the radar and do some work quietly in the background to support his father, support his brother and his sister-in-law. But whether that happens will, will remain to be seen, I think. Absolutely. And Angela, uh, on the question of Princess Catherine's privacy, obviously just discuss it with Russell. It has mm. been a huge issue. You wrote about it for the Daily Telegraph this week. Mm, that's right. I was reminded of a time back in um, 1993 when uh, the Princess of Wales, the former Princess of Wales, Diana, um, was caught out in a gym. There was a, a gym owner had put a camera in, in the gym and taken pictures of her massive, massive breach of her privacy. She won a legal case to have those pictures withdrawn so that they could never be used again. And the, the fee that was going to the gym owner was donated to charity. And it felt this week, as Russell was saying, when those uh, the, the allegations of staff looking at uh, the Princess of Wales medical records, it felt like we were back there again. This very febrile environment where people want information and they feel that there is no boundaries. I think part of the reason is because we are now living in a culture of oversharing. Social media encourages people to overshare. But that doesn't mean that everyone wants to participate in that. Absolutely. And that, that is totally true. And if people want to share, they're entitled to. But honestly, some of the carry-on in various parts of the media and celebrity land in the lead-up to Catherine's announcement has just been beyond contempt. Louise, I've only got about 30 seconds, but I understand the grovelling apologies have commenced. They sure have. And look, it beggars belief that these celebrities would join the pile on for Kate. You know, where's Kate? Kim Kardashian making jokes about her car going out to find Kate. Of course, Blake Lively doing a very awkward sort of clumsy Photoshop fail, you know, mocking Kate without actually naming her. But we all knew what the um, the point of that Instagram post was. She has, of course, since apologised and, and said, you know, best wishes to all again without naming Kate. But I find it staggering that these celebrities would even engage in this sort of insult and 
this sort of terrible behaviour towards a woman who is um, was already unwell. We knew she was unwell, but not as seriously as we have since discovered. So. It's um, and uh, you know whether they're actually sorry or whether they're trying to, you know, mitigate reputational damage. Of course, is a different thing. Absolutely, Louise Roberts, Ang Angela Mollard. Thank you as always for joining us.